Hey everybody, it's Ms. Dietrich helping you on lesson 1.1. Uh, this particular direction gives a lot of sixth graders difficulty. It says, find the least whole number that can replace the box to make the statement true. And sometimes it's helpful just to think of an easier problem just to help your brain wrap itself around it. So that's what we're going to do. Let's just think if we had, um, let's look at this problem that we have right here. 12 divided by 3 equals 4. Now, if you look here, the box is in the position of being before the division symbol. So let's pretend we didn't know that that was 12. What would we have to do with these two numbers to get 12? And wouldn't the answer be we'd have to apply the inverse operation? We'd have to multiply these two things to get 12? So in this case, we're not talking about the value on the left being equal to the value on the right. We're talking about the value on the left being greater than the value on the right. This would read as, you know, left side is greater than the right side. So let's just go back to our simpler problem to help ourselves understand. If we had added 1 to this 12 and made it 13, and if we had proceeded with dividing this out to find out what it actually equals, we'd get 4 and a third. Now, isn't 4 and a third greater than 4? So in other words, the next number up from this, if we just add 1, because that's what they want to know, what's the least whole number that can replace the box to make the statement true? Because we can't make this a decimal or a mixed number. It's got to be a whole number. And it, we wouldn't make this a 14 because 13 is a lower value than 14, and it still makes the statement true. So let's take a look at 12 and apply, or 11 rather, and apply that same idea. So the first step that you would do is you would apply inverse operations. So we would multiply this number and this number, which would give us 9 times 7 is 63, and add the two zeros on, and you get 6,300. And then you have to say to yourself, well, if I did make that 6,300, then the two values would be equal. I want this side to be greater than the value on the right. So that means I'd have to add 1 to that number that I just said, which means that you would need the number 6,301. Now, if we apply that to number 12, same idea. To find the value, if this had been an equal sign, we would just simply multiply these two things together. So the little trick that you're going to have to apply is to add 1 to whatever that product is. And if you do that correctly, you would get 1,692. Now, number 13 is oriented in a slightly different way, which is going to make this a little bit challenging. So I've written something with an equal sign just to help our brains wrap around it first. The box here, in this case, we don't know that that's 12. So then you would say to yourself, what would I have to do to these two values to get 12? Because that's what you're going to be doing here. And wouldn't we be multiplying these two things? to get the number here. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to multiply these two things to get the number that's here. However, in this case, you want what's on the left. This reads 110 is less than whatever the value over here is going to be. So that means you have to apply kind of opposite thinking there. A um, little bit challenging, but I think you might be able to get the hang of it. So multiply these two together and ask, ask yourself, do I need to add one to that value? Or do I need to subtract one from that value? And if you're not sure, take the value that you're going to try, divide it by 47, and just make sure that that value that you have over here is a bigger value than this value of 110. All right, good luck finishing that up.